Welcome to another Education Library Research Tutorial. If you watched our introduction video for searching in education databases, then you already know how to access and perform a basic search in education databases, and you know how to save and send articles from these sources. After watching this video, you'll know some of the advanced strategies that you can use to more effectively search in subject databases, including searching multiple databases simultaneously, and using a database thesaurus to browse subjects and choose keywords. At this point, you'll see that I've opened Eric EBSCO and I'm on the main search screen, which actually looks similar and has some of the same search features as the Summit Advanced Search page. The search strategies that we covered in the Advanced Searching in Summon video, including phrase searching, truncation, and Boolean operators, all work in education databases as well. If you need to brush up on any of those features, you'll want to watch that video. Now, if you're like me, you're probably always looking for ways to save time when you're doing research. And one of the best features that some subject databases, including Eric, offer to make your searching more efficient is the Choose Databases option at the top of the page, which you can use to search multiple databases at once. I'm going to open that, and I'm given a long list of databases that I can choose from. If you wanted, you could select all of the databases to search in, but I'm going to select a few of the key databases for education. Eric is already selected, so I'm going to add Education Source and Teacher Reference Center, and now when I search, I'll be finding articles from all of these databases. As I search, I'm trying to answer the following question. How can teachers help elementary students develop digital literacies? Now, before I start entering keywords, I want to know if the terminology I've used to develop my research question is going to get me the best search results. Often, the best terms to use as keywords when you're searching in a subject database are the ones that the database uses as subject headings. Subject headings are the descriptive terms applied to each of the articles in the database, and many databases offer a thesaurus to help users find all of their subject headings. The thesaurus can be a really useful tool that you can use to check if you're using the same terminology as the database, or if the database represents your keywords with a different term that you can use instead. So I'm going to open a thesaurus, and because I'm searching in multiple databases, I can find the thesauri at the top of the screen here under Subjects. If you're searching in a single database, the word Subjects here would be replaced by Thesaurus, which you would click instead. I can see that both Education Source and Eric have a thesaurus for me to use, and I'm going to open the Education Source thesaurus. From here, I'm going to enter digital literacy, which is one of the terms I plan to use as a keyword during my search, and then click browse. So you'll see that I'm being told that instead of the term digital literacy, I should use computer literacy, which is one of the database's subject headings. This means that any articles related to digital literacy will actually have computer literacy as a subject heading. While I'm here, I'm also going to search for any other terms that might be related and useful as keywords. To do so, I'm going to select computer literacy and look at the broader and related terms. The thesaurus is showing me terms like technological literacy and internet literacy as subject headings, and searching with any of these terms will likely help me find articles related to digital literacy as well. Now when I start my search, I'm going to combine some of those related terms with OR in the first search row so that I find articles that have any of those terms as subject headings. And I'll add my second keyword, elementary school, and some related terms, like primary school, grade school, and elementary education in the second row. And then I'll perform my search. From here, you can use the strategies covered in the introduction video for searching in education databases, like the filters and the folders, to finish your search. Now you should be even more prepared to search effectively in education databases, but please reach out to the education librarians for more assistance with your searching.